The ability to dribble is an essential skill for any Rocket League player looking to improve and rank up. Dribbling is useful in all playlists and at all times during the game, whether it's creating chances, scoring goals or buying time in defence. Being able to dribble when necessary is crucial for ranking up in Rocket League. Too often when players have time to control the ball and start a dribble, they're guilty of hitting the ball away and giving possession to the other team. Whether you're new to dribbling or someone who's been trying to improve for a while and is struggling to know what to do, the aim of this video is to provide some tips and advice to help you on your journey to improving your dribbling and then be confident using it in a game. Before we get going, I should state for the record that I am by no means the best dribbler in the world. I've improved a lot and I've come a long way, but I'm also someone who's struggled with it for a long time and I've had to work really hard to get to where I'm at and I continue to practice it every day to make sure that I can keep improving. As usual, the video has been broken down into segments and these are the segments that I feel follow the natural progression for a lot of players and are also the most useful things to learn in this order. If you're a fairly new player, it's important not to jump to the end and to make sure you're comfortable with each step before proceeding. However, different players will be at different stages, so in the comments there will be timestamps for each section of the video in case you do want to skip to a specific part. Finally, although this video isn't necessarily aimed for the highest ranked people in the game, it might still be useful. I have some friends at a Grand Champ 1 and 2 that aren't comfortable with dribbling and I know that they would find this video useful. Now, this is probably something most players have done at some point during their time playing Rocket League, or perhaps even doing so now, so I thought it should be included. It's the natural starting point for players getting into dribbling. Now, for the record, I would recommend, where possible, to go straight to learning how to dribble with the ball on top of your car. It's the proper way of dribbling, and it's something all players need to learn anyway. However, for lower ranked or new players, dribbling with the ball on the ground can still be helpful, and it's a good way to get into dribbling. So don't worry if this is where you want to start. To successfully learn this, you should already have a decent ability to manage your speed and direction of your car. It sounds very simple, but I know a lot of players struggle because when they first learn dribbling, it often requires a different set of mechanics and muscle memory that they're not used to. This means staying in a position where you're not too close or too far away from the ball and where you can easily get to it to knock it around an opponent. It may take a bit of time, a bit of trial and error, but as with all things in Rocket League, you will eventually get the hang of it. Once you're feeling confident, you can try doing it at different speeds. Obviously at a fast speed, you're probably only going to be able to hit it around one player before you get challenged, so practice at slower speeds and doing sharp turns to see how you get on. Just play around and have fun with it before moving on to the next stage. So before getting into the actual practice of dribbling the ball, it's essential to learn when to change between ball cam and non-ball cam. Generally, when starting a dribble, you should change off ball cam and keep it off until you're finished. Doing this will help you manage your speed, keep an eye on the ball and to make sure it stays on top of your car. Also from non-ball cam you can have a better view of what's in front of you so you can plan your dribble better. It is worth noting that there are some players that use ball cam to dribble but the vast majority don't and they wouldn't suggest it. Ultimately it's down to personal preference although it is generally considered to be more beneficial and easier to not use ball cam. There are a number of ways to start a dribble, some of them will be shown now. To do this, start the ball rolling in any direction and then gently pop it up by using the side of your car until it is on top of your car. This is probably the most common way to start a dribble. Before moving on to the next examples, it's worth saying that the following examples are both more advanced ways of starting or continuing a dribble. It's not expected to learn them before moving on and they're just mentioned as examples. For low ranked or new players, the vast majority of dribbles will be started by popping the ball onto your own car. To catch the ball, practice getting a soft touch on the middle to the front third of your car and then trying to carry on the dribble. There may be times where you don't need to control the ball to dribble and getting a quick touch can turn the opponent or catch them off guard. Obviously, if you don't want to control the ball and send it forwards, let's say you want to go backwards or quickly turn around a defender, that will affect which part of the car the ball needs to hit. So just bear that in mind when taking your touch. When a teammate or opponent hits the ball in your direction, it can sometimes be better to keep the ball close and start a dribble, rather than taking on a shot which, depending on the situation, may result in a turnover in possession. Once again, the direction the ball is coming to you from will affect which part of your car you need to use to control it. Generally, a pass will come when you're on offence, so it's important to maintain your forward momentum when you control the ball. Once you're comfortable getting the ball on your car, the next step will be to practice keeping it there whilst moving around the field. For now, let's focus on driving in a straight line and keeping the ball on your car. 
The most important thing when dribbling is the position of the ball on your car. Too far forward and your flick won't work and the ball will fall off, too far back and the same problem. Ideally, the ball should be on top of your car, slightly forward of the centre. To ensure it's in the right place, you can look at the circle of the ball and try and keep your car in the middle, but through practice you'll learn which is the right spot. The next step will be managing the speed of the ball whilst it's on your car. Begin just by using Accelerate, then slowly implement Boost as you become more comfortable controlling the speed of the ball. Remember to tap the Boost as a way to maintain speed, rather than just holding it down. A very important tip is to remember not to use your brakes to slow down, but just let your car slow down naturally. Although it's tempting and seems like the right idea, it will just result in a loss of control and the ball jumping around on your roof. Instead, simply stop accelerating or boosting and let your car gradually lose momentum. There are times where you can use brake, but generally it's better to get in the habit of not. Before we move on, make sure you've practiced this step and are ready to advance. Just quickly, if you do use PC, it can be helpful to use backers mod because then you can assign a button on your controller or keyboard that you press and it will put the ball automatically on top of your car and this will make it easier to practice dribbling with the ball on top of your car. The next step is to learn how to change direction and speed whilst maintaining control of the dribble. First, let's start with direction. Fairly straightforward, but the basic way to change direction is to have the ball slightly off centre of your car. If the ball is slightly to the left, you'll turn left. If it's to the right, it will go right. Speed and the amount of the ball is off centre affects how much you will turn with the ball on your car. Next for speed. Once again, this depends on the location of the ball as well as the speed of your car. The closer the ball is to the front of the car, the more speed the ball will gain and the more difficult it will be to control. The further back it is, the slower it will be. Ideally, you want to keep the ball fairly central and use your car to manage speed rather than using the position of the ball. When learning how to change your speed in dribbling, you shouldn't just be learning fast or slow. You should be learning how to transition from one to the other in the game as it will give you more opportunities to score and make life more difficult for the opponents. Once you're happy with the previous steps and can control and dribble effectively with the ball, you can now move on to more advanced dribbling techniques. One of the most useful is to use handbrake or drift to change the direction of the ball more quickly and to pop it up on top of your car. To do this, simply use drift to turn your car quickly when you either have control of the dribble to sharply change direction, or when the ball's on the ground to sharply pop it up and go around an opponent. This can be super useful as you rank up and players learn to defend dribbles better, so the sharp change in direction can help you get around an opponent's challenge. The final thing we'll touch on in this video are the more advanced dribbling mechanics that you can implement into your game. Some of them will be listed on screen, but there are quite a few, so they won't all be there. Probably one of the most useful advanced dribbling techniques is the bounce dribble. The basis of a bounce dribble is fairly self-explanatory. You get small touches on the ball whilst keeping it bouncing in front of your car. The reason bounce dribbles are so useful is because they give the player a lot of options. They can continue their dribble, go into an aerial play, or take a ground shot. And because of the mechanics of a bounce dribble, a player can generate a lot of power and shoot to any part of the goal with very little warning for the defender. This is why they're so effective. Once you're confident dribbling the ball, you can start to learn these various mechanics. I'm not going to go through them individually because A. I'm not good enough and B. I will inevitably forget some and C. Because they're advanced, they deserve their own videos. They're mainly being mentioned for people who have mastered basic dribbles and want to see what more they can do. Before we end the video, I just want to say that as with everything in Rocket League, it's just a matter of putting in the hours and practicing. Do this and over time you will see an improvement in your dribbling ability. Just keep at it. So there we go. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. If you didn't, please let me know in the comments how I could improve as I'm always looking to do so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.